Welcome to this review of the solo model, where we're focused on this idea of a steady state. And in particular, we're going to try to characterize it in terms of algebra. There's going to be a separate discussion where we'll focus on the geometry and thinking about it with a graph. So our starting off point is that previously we talked about this equation I have written out, which is our law of motion. And the law of motion is that your capital next period, so kt plus 1, is going to be equal to whatever capital that you had last period that, that you hold over, plus any new capital you get from investment, minus the capital that you lose due to depreciation. Remember, depreciation is you know basically capital breaking. Things get old. Equipment gets old. Factories get old, and they fall apart. And we said for simplicity that... Um, our investment is in the basic model, basically that we save a fraction s of our output, so s times f of kt, and that savings is used for investment in this closed economy. And then our depreciation is going to be a fixed fraction delta of our capital, so our depreciation is delta times kt. So now we can move on to our key question, which is, is there a steady state to this model? And then if there is, how can we calculate it? So. The answer to the first question is, of course, yes, there is a steady state. We really wouldn't be any point to this video if there wasn't. So how can we characterize it? Well, the basic idea of a steady state is that things aren't changing. So in, in symbols, that would be delta k, the change in k, is 0 because it isn't changing. And then delta k, by definition, is k t plus 1, next period's capital, minus this period's capital, k t. So now we can use our law of motion above to substitute in for kt plus 1. So that is kt plus investment, but I'm going to go ahead and put in s times f of kt just to speed things up. So s of times f times uh, kt uh, minus depreciation minus delta kt minus kt. And then we still have 0 on the right. And the first thing we notice we can do is... We have a kt plus some stuff, minus some stuff, minus kt. So that kt minus kt, those cancel out. So this simplifies then to s f of kt minus delta kt equals 0. And that's pretty much our steady state condition, but it might help to maybe rearrange it a little bit. Let's move the delta kt to the right-hand side. So then we get s f of kt equals delta kt. And this is the one we'll use a lot in practice for characterizing the steady state because we can set up the left-hand side, which basically is our new capital. It's investment, so how much new capital we're adding through investment. And the right-hand side is depreciation. How much capital are we losing uh, because of depreciation? And in a steady state, the new capital minus the capital you lose should be canceling out so that overall there's no change. It has a sort of simple intuitive definition. So let's go ahead and use our key equation that I've reproduced here for a specific example. And this example is actually one we've worked with. In a previous review, we worked with a production function of k to the 0 0.3, a savings rate of 16%, uh, percent, so 0.16, and a depreciation rate of 4%, so 0 0.04. So I set up the key equation, and we'll just go ahead and plug things in. But I want to note one thing that wasn't quite right on the previous slide, which is that I left in the t's as if we were talking about a particular point in time. But when we're talking about the steady state, it's really not something that happens at a point in time. It's something more general. Um, it doesn't actually necessarily even happen at a, at a finite amount of time. It's just overall where is the model headed. And we like to denote that steady state with these asterisks. Uh, with a star. So we're going to denote the steady state capital level with a star, and we don't need to put a time subscript because we said this is not really about a specific point in time. All right, so S is 0.16, F of K is K to the 0.3, delta is 0 0.04, and then we have K star. So now we just need to solve this for K star. Left out my star here. So the first thing we could do is try to move all the k's to one side and all the um, numbers to the other. So let's put this as 0 0.16 divided by 0 0.04 on the left, and then we'll have k star divided by k star to the 0.3 on the right. Um, it's pretty easy to simplify the left. We'll just put that into a calculator or do it in our head, and it's 4. The right is a little bit more of a pain to simplify. What do you do when you have a variable to some exponent? Implicitly, this is to the 1, and then you divide by the same variable to a different exponent. And hopefully you remember, you could do a little review, but hopefully you remember, it's basically you subtract the exponents. So what you get is k star to the 
1 minus 0.3, or 0.7, so to the 0.7. And now we want to solve to get k equals some specific number. So we need to do something to both sides to, um, you know, basically cancel out to the 0.7. And what you do is you take it to the power of the opposite, so to the power of 1 over 0.7, and then we'll have to do that to both sides. So we'll do 4 to the 1 over 0.7, and then k to the 0.7 to the 1 over 0.7, those cancel, so we just get k, or k star, equals, and then we'll have to plug in that expression on the left into a calculator, but if you do that, you'll get 7.246. So our steady state level of capital that we're headed towards is 7.246. I should point out another thing at this point. This is the you know so-called right answer. This is what we'd expect you to produce on a test, but you might say, isn't there another solution? If I go back to the initial equation up here, if you plug in zero for both k's, it is, it is true that you'll get zero equals zero. So, you know, is zero one of the steady states too? And the answer is yes, it is. So k, k star equals zero is a steady state. But it's not very interesting, it's not useful information, it's definitely not what we'd want you to say on the test. Because essentially saying k equals zero is a steady state is what you're saying is that if you don't have any capital, you can't produce anything, and thus you'll always have no capital and no output and no consumption and so on. And honestly, no economy on the planet has no capital and has no production, so that isn't very realistic, but it's also uninteresting in that it doesn't really tell us anything new. Um, you didn't need to take this course to know that if you have no inputs, you don't get any output. So we'll want to focus on the, you know, the non-trivial steady state whenever solving for one.